Hello, I am Luxbrush. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts, quick thoughts, not really, on My Little Pony, Season 4, Episode 11, Three's Company. This was a fun episode, though it's very much filler. There was a lot of interesting, not really plot points, but plot points for the episode that were just kind of odd. And I don't know, it just overall felt weird, but enjoyable. Discord was in it. It kind of has to be weird as a requirement since he is the embodiment of chaos. But there was really no story progression in it. You know, the lesson was stale. There was no progression of the plot in the items, you know, received for the falling and redeeming of an element. We had a nod to it with Discord giving her that little medal. Which was mostly just a joke, especially with Discord's thumb going over Twilight's face in the metal. Yeah, and we know it wasn't a legitimate item because the animators didn't put that little rainbow sheen across it. No rainbow sheen in eyes, no rainbow sheen on object. And then, of course, there's that wonderful song. And I mean wonderful, it was very entertaining. I think that was probably my favorite part of the episode. Is like, wait a minute, is Discord really going to... Yes, he is. We're having an entire song about getting a glass of water. This works. Only Discord and the talented John Delancey could pull it off. Yeah, and I love all the visual references during the song. Wow, we had everything from flash dance to... God, I can't remember most of them. Uh, Harry Potter, for one. Wow, there were just a lot in there. I'm going to have to watch it again to like list all of them, but it was jam-packed with references. Well, Discord had references, period. I mean, his thinking tree was iconic Dr. Seuss. And I like the reference back to Generation 3 and the creatures Fluttershy was going after. The Breezies, I believe they were called. Uh, Breezy is what was called in the episode, but I don't remember ever watching Gen 3, so... I never really watched Gen 3 either. I just know the title of one of the movies is Something and the Breezies. I'm going to have to look it up sometime, but I found out about it through the documentaries people have been putting out about the Brony fandom and where My Little Pony came from and the previous... Generations. Yeah, the previous generations. So what didn't you like about the episode? I did not like that it was another recycled lesson. You know, the fact that spending time with family is important whether or not you're doing what you planned... You know, we had that with the Apple family reunion. Applejack overplanned, it went badly. She sat back, relaxed, it went much better. Okay, so Twilight wasn't at the Apple family reunion, but the audience was. And we've already touched on the fact that Twilight's a bit of an overplanner. So these are items that have already been addressed. What's really funny is it just struck me that it's very similar to the Applejack Pinkie Pie episode we had recently. That also had kind of a similar theme to it, other than the their lesson at the end was even friends can be a family, but it's also spending time together is also good. Yeah, so not only did we have this last season, we had it kind of just a couple episodes ago. Mm-hmm. Can you think of anything else? Of course. Of course! Why do you ask such silly questions? Discord's behavior seemed to fall in line with what we had in Rainbow Falls, where we had a character backsliding to older behavior. You know, Discord was redeemed, so while he's still the embodiment of chaos, he's usually less of a jerk. You know, the way he baited Twilight in the season four opening episodes was actually in a more positive manner because he was forcing her to face the issues that were coming up between her and her friends and actually goaded her into a positive course of action. This episode, he was just being a jerk. Fluttershy was out of town, the elements of Harmony are no longer around, so he just decided that he wanted to have some fun and that Princess Twilight Sparkle was going to be his victim. Which he only knew about through the letters from Fluttershy. Which is nice that he's actually getting letters from Fluttershy. Very nice, especially since, you know, we don't have the same level of modern communication that we have 
in the real world, you know, mm -hmm. writing letters is very important. Yeah, and I initially thought he did this because he was bored. I actually remember that in the episode he stated himself that he was actually kind of worried that Twilight wasn't really his friend. Which kind of semi makes sense because of the fact that he knows Fluttershy is his friend. He's not sure about any of the others, especially the fact that, oh, I don't know, the element of loyalty ran off at the first time she got. Yeah, which is especially con hilarious considering that this, this is right after... After a proven loyalty episode. Yeah, so we have ponies backsliding left and right. <laughs> That's kind of funny, backsliding left and right. Just, ha, that, ha. just that image, yeah. Yeah, but... Discord wanted to disrupt them. You saw his reaction when, wait, you mean I didn't ruin your day? <laughs> yeah, that was an awesome reaction. And I had a feeling one of them was going to bring that up, but it was also kind of funny how both Twilight and Discord went, what, our day wasn't ruined? <laughs> well, you know, Twilight's such a planner, and as they brought up in the beginning of the episode, every time she's seen Caden since... Twilight's yeah, become an things, adult. Yeah, bad things happen. Yeah. It's like, I hate to always meet you underneath those circumstances. Cadence even stated that. Yeah. And going back still to Cadence and Twilight, they really are phasing out their traditional grading. Mm-hmm. Which kind of makes sense because Twilight's station has changed, but Cadence still considers her a really good friend, and of course, she now considers her a sister-in-law, but I was saying... Because of her change in station. Their level of relationship is a little different because it's less, you know, senpai underclassmen and more of equals. Yeah. And since every pony who hates Flash Sentry is already incensed about it, we may as well mention, oh, look, there was Flash Sentry. Or someone who looks a lot like him. Yes, because we can't be certain. What's really funny, if you pay attention, Twilight completely ignores him, but it looks like he looks back over his shoulder like, what was that her? Yeah, which in Equestria Girls, the Equestria Flash Sentry does see Twilight mm -hmm. in his guard position, and that does happen at the Crystal Palace, so it could be technically possible that he's one of Cadence's royal guards, even though he is in a sparkly crystal pony. Which you didn't seem to agree with the fact that the knight was still sparkly. Well, in the episode where they restore the Crystal Kingdom, the main six have the crystal effect on them too while they're inside the Empire. And then it goes away when they leave. And then when we went back for Games Ponies Play, we didn't have that level of sparkliness. Probably because it costs more to animate, but you can't go and make this entire kingdom when they're happy, they're all sparkly. The kingdom is happy, no one's sparkling. And if it only seems to last within the kingdom, then why is he sparkling all the way in Ponyville? I'm thinking it's only the crystal ponies who get to sparkle, and that's what Rarity was implying back during the Crystal Empire episode. Yeah, I say he's a vampire. <laughs> Ouch. I <laughs> couldn't help it. Thank you for that wonderful image. Especially of a pony coming in out of nowhere. You dropped your hat. Rip! Here's my shirt. I didn't say wear pony, I said vampire. <laughs> the animation of this episode was really good too, especially that awesome train from the Crystal Empire. It's like the bullet train from the Crystal Empire. Yeah, it's like, wow, here I thought the Crystal Empire, you know, having disappeared for however long, might be a little backwards. That thing looks freaking awesome! Yeah, it's like, where did that come from? Is that the rural train? Because we got there through the normal train last time. Last two times, actually. Yeah, and that, but that was the Ponyville train, which, you know, looking at... It matches Ponyville. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, that wasn't where I was going. I was saying, I think it's about the only train we've ever seen. Yeah. Because everyone starts their journey leaving from Ponyville. And they're catching the train back to Ponyville. Mm -hmm. So it's always the Ponyville train. Mm-hmm. And you technically really needed two trains in this episode because the fact that Fluttershy is going off and Cadence is coming right then. I actually expected Cadence to get off of the Ponyville train as Fluttershy was getting on. Yeah, but this was kind of nice. Mm-hmm. 
I wasn't quite sure at first that Discord didn't actually have a cold. Because even if he had a cold, he'd still be doing stuff. Yeah. I, I'm rather impressed with his fakery abilities because he was timing all his mischief with his sneezes. And he tricked, you know, and used his powers to make Rarity and Applejack sick. Once again, showing his influence over everything under the sun and moon. Yeah. Oh, also, I want an immunity barrier. Yeah, and I want to know why Cadence came up with one. <laughs> other than being a full sitter. That's actually, that's probably the reason. Being a full sitter would require an immunity shield. Although, she would have to create a very tight version of it. Because you have to hold babies. Mm -hmm. And they usually sneeze right in your face. Mm-hmm. Oh, we haven't talked about the Star Swirled the Bearded exhibit. Yeah, the Star Swirled Bearded exhibit was kind of interesting, especially the poster, which shows him being completely white. So I don't think we've actually had an official version of what Star Swirled the Bearded looks like. We've just had a bunch of fan renditions, because there's one floating around that's pretty standard that everyone uses. But the poster looked nothing like the one the fans apparently have come up with. Well, that happens, especially when the authors aren't allowed to read fan fiction. But I thought it was interesting that there were so many Star Swirl the Bearded cosplayers at the Ponyville exhibit. Yeah, they were everywhere. And after one time, Discord's knees were being chased by exhibit pieces. Yeah. I just, on the exhibit pieces themselves, I'm like, really? We have that much of a candle left from when he made this journey? I I'm thinking maybe the candle itself wasn't important but the candle holder but everyone calls it the candle yeah but still i'm like really don't most people use candles down to the stubs and if this was a long dangerous journey wouldn't the candle be lower so any other thoughts um staying on the exhibit i it's like okay are the other cosplayers ponyville locals did twilight actually start that club that she want talked about in the halloween episode because nobody got her costume on Nightmare Night. And if it's a traveling exhibit... Well, almost no one got her costume. Luna got her costume. That was about it. So essentially, no one native to Ponyville got the costume. Mm -hmm. So are all these cosplayers Ponyville natives who learned about Star Swirl since then? Because you have to take into account that this is a traveling exhibit. So it's gone to other cities. If it's going somewhere as small as Ponyville... I'm sure it's gone to other small communities. So how far did these ponies travel, if they're not Ponyville natives, to see a traveling exhibit that they probably could have gone to a larger city like Trottingham or Manhattan and had a, a fuller experience because there's more tourist attractions and more things to do in a larger city. All good points. I don't have anything to add on that. Wow, and I thought I was a deep thinker on this. Well, nowhere near as deep thinker as the other analysts I've seen, but I thought I, wow. We think about different things, which is why this is fun. So I think we've wrapped up everything because I don't have anything else to really add right now, I don't think. Other than the fact that I'm glad Discord actually got sick at the end and it was his own fault because he sent them after the flower and picking the flower released the monster. Oh yes, I was I was trying to figure out some way to segue into the monster. Wow, that that's a good monster, but what is it with things with tentacles in this season? To me, it seems like a lot because we've had two monsters. Well, technically a bunch of vines and a monster. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, I just can't believe that putting those two items that close to each other, considering fan reactions based on anything being near anything. Mm -hmm. I'm like, we're, we're giving some canonality to this. <laughs> yes, I'm making up words. You know what you have done. We are not no-whacking. <laughs> uh, well, I think that's everything. Uh, is it everything this time? <laughs> I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for listening and hope to speak with you soon. These were our thoughts on My Little Pony, Season 4, Episode 11. Three's Company. <laughs>